Hello, my dear adult children of alcoholics and people from otherwise dysfunctional families. Sophia Voss, Doctor of Clinical Psychology, here with you today, the creator of the workshop for adult children of alcoholics and the author of uh, the workbook for adult children of alcoholics. In this video, I am going to talk about why it's difficult for adult children of alcoholics to be vulnerable in relationships. And this video concludes a series on relationship patterns uh, for adult children of alcoholics, video number six. So in order to explore the difficulty around vulnerability in relationships, we must first explore why oftentimes children from dysfunctional families develop skills of manipulation. Because people from dysfunctional families usually manipulate others over being vulnerable with others. And the reason why this happens is because in that kind of a family, it is impossible to express your true authentic emotions because of the inadequate response that the parents are likely going to have. It has also been impossible to engage in healthy conflict. And so in order for the child to survive, the child must develop skills of manipulations. They must develop uh, the ability to understand the kind of mood that their parents are in and to understand the kind of a response that they're likely to receive, be able to detect those patterns. And so what happens with kids that grow up in those kind of homes? Well, oftentimes they begin to lie. They begin to lie because they know that if they truly express what, what is happening in their life, like if they get a bad grade or something, the response of the parents is going to be so inadequate and it's going to be so painful that they would lie instead. Or they would hide the truth about what might be going on interpersonally in their relationships with other kids because they are afraid that the parents might actually blame them. Right? Once again, this kind of inadequate response causes the child that grows up in this kind of a family to just lie. Um, avoiding talking about feelings, right, and pretending that everything is okay, once again, inadequate response. And this avoidance, this inability to share the, the truth of the experience. I can make endless videos about what happens there and the kind of defenses that are built and what happens in the future. But just as a summary, right, this kind of emotional, personally emotional, uh, um, manipulation, putting on a mask, not being fully truthful about, um, about the reality of, of, of whatever it is that's happening. And then there's kind of like this discharging rage onto others, um, which looks like in forms of acting out, it looks like infusing emotions into others. So oftentimes children from those families will like infuse guilt onto maybe like the non-alcoholic parent, right? Or they're going to discharge their rage onto the non-alcoholic parent. Or they might bully other kids in school in order to somehow discharge that rage onto other people um, or play a victim um, towards other, other family members in like one way or another. And this is a way to get their, get their needs met, uh, to be seen and also to somehow overcome this rage and this anger um, or if the child internalizes it unfortunately that can lead to other really kind of compulsive um, or depressive ways of behaving which once again endless amounts of videos can be made on this and books already written and could continue to be written so this carries on into the adult life of course and the way that the adult manifests this is continuing to tell lies, right? That can become a habit. Um, judging and criticizing others as a way to disempower them with this idea that they can then somehow control them. Also as a way to help them bolster kind of their self-esteem, um, as a way to manipulate others to be with them, to kind of like tr try to lower their self-esteem so that the idea that, that, that they're going to need this person. Uh, silent treatments and withdrawal. So sometimes just this inability to really share what's going on. The person can just shut down and withdraw and not speak at all. Uh, gaslighting others, so getting super defensive. 
when other people present their feelings, right, or like they express their vulnerabilities, this defense of I can't accept that and I can't have anything to share with you, right? That's actually what happens in the moment and it just turns into uh, gaslighting behavior, defensiveness. Playing a victim, making myself the, the protagonist receiver of everything that's negative in the world. Um, so this kind of never-ending um, expression of um, being wronged, um, being somehow mistreated by other people. And this is, once again, in order to have that need met, to be seen, to be cared for. Being overly positive with other people. So complimenting other people and kind of fawning even if you don't mean it. Um, and don't genuinely feel this way also as a way to gain control. And it could be, could be that, that slightly too, too much, a lot of gift giving and things of that nature. And using sexuality can also be a form of a like manipulative defense. So why is this, is this negative? Because manipulation has a negative connotation and also it's really important to acquire some skill sets that are like manipulative, like the art of persuasion, the art of good negotiation, generally being able to understand the traits of other people and understanding how to best, how to best influence them, right? How to best work with different types of personalities. What works for one person might not necessarily work for another person. So it's a great skill and a great talent of something that we can all um, kind of work to develop and understand, which will make us more collaborative um, and understanding of others and um, developing the ability to look out for our best interests as well. So these are all great skills, but where they go wrong out of the above mentioned skills prior to that, the, the, the manipulative skills in the relationship is because obviously if one you know, gaslights, gets really defensive, belittles others, works to lower their self-esteem, um, constantly plays the victim, right? Oftentimes that will send healthy people in running in the opposite direction, right? Um, maybe it works, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a good tactic to have with other people that kind of builds that um, relationship that um, is uh, not as close, as loving, right, as vulnerable. So um, not to say that people will necessarily run in the opposite direction, although often they do, but, but the relationship would be built with you know, conflict and avoidance and things of that nature. And, and the, the other side of that is, you know, besides the fact that this may be hurting other people, it, it's hurting yourself because there's a feeling of wearing a mask. So even with the positive kind of manipulative skills like fawning over other people, um, getting them to really like you, being overly complimentary, right, there's a feeling of, is this really am I really portraying my real self and that is the opposite of closeness because in in either way whether you're kind of attacking other people or fawning other people either way any form of manipulation alienates you in the long run because you're not in touch with yourself and also you can't express your genuine self to other people therefore they're more distant from you as well. So it's just it's like this like protective bubble, right? And so, as I've said, so this obviously comes from the inability and the not learned skill set of what it's like to be vulnerable, right? So manipulation is has become a replacement for vulnerability, right? The, what's taught in an alcoholic family or a dysfunctional family is how to manipulate, not how to be vulnerable. Being vulnerable is um, a completely alien concept. So the way to be vulnerable, right, is the vulnerability is like, it's like an act of genuine expression, right? Genuine expression of thoughts and feelings and, and emotions, right? That, that's what vulnerability is. 
So in order to, to overcome that, I'm going I'm to list some, some things. And they're not in a particular order, because this journey is convoluted and complex if this is something that you recognize in yourself and you want to work through. So the way to work through this is obviously acknowledging where you're using manipulation, being able to acknowledge this. And it's very difficult to do on your own and much easier to um, work through in, in psychotherapy or in group therapy as well. Um, so having the ability to actually take a step back and think like, oh, I'm actually being manipulated right now, right? Very difficult. The other part is learning to detect and express emotions. So part of growing up in this dysfunctional family and not having the ability to express your emotions, we have to build such a way of functioning that then can cause kind of like alexithymia. So the inability to be able to name your own emotions, to feel them and to name them. What are you feeling right now? Where do you feel it in your body? What is the name for this emotion? And things like anxiety, anxiety is not an emotion, right? You can feel anxiety, you can name where it is, but it's not an emotion. So being able to actually get down to the emotions that you're feeling, which could be conflicting, so you can be feeling, you know, sad and happy at the same time, right? Um, so developing the ability to do that, so, so important. And then being compassionate to yourself, learning how to be compassionate to yourself, no matter what you're feeling, thinking, experiencing, not judging yourself for it. Once again, if you grew up in a dysfunctional home, you might have really negative feelings about, for example, what it means to be angry. Because when you saw people angry, it was so damaging that you probably thought, I, I never, ever want to experience this. I never want to be this person, maybe, right? So maybe you repress it. Or other emotions. Uh, things maybe you were told that you were wrong for feeling. And so developing the self-compassion, being able to sit with yourself and tell yourself, I feel this, I think this, and that's okay because I'm human. And so I'm allowed to have this spectrum of thoughts or feelings. And they might not even be logical. They might not even make sense. But this is my process in the moment, and that's okay. So but developing that compassion towards yourself, and then building the skill set to be able to express those thoughts and feelings, right? How do you express, how do you express how you feel? What are the words that you use? How to construct this? And then also developing the intuition, develop, developing, calibrating between who is safe to be vulnerable with, maybe who not so much to build a little bit more trust with when is the right time to do that, right? Um, so kind of understanding who you can practice this with and who to continue to maintain distance from. So <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that it gave you some things to think about. Let me know what you think. Uh, once again, to be able to work through this, if you want to learn how to be vulnerable, because this topic is brought up all the time, <laughs> everywhere, right? This idea of, of vulnerability. You really want to work with someone. So working with a psychotherapist, you can also sign up with one-on-one -on -one sessions with me. You can find all the links below. I talk more about this in my workshop for adult children of alcoholics, where I have a whole section on how to be able to connect with your emotions and how to express them, when to express them. So there's a lot of detailed exercises that you can find there uh, or in my written book, which talks a little bit about this as well, about emotional recognition. And um, thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to my channel for more upcoming videos. And I hope to see you later.